Do your clients promise to reimburse you for expenses that relate to the job? Well, then you should watch this video so you know how to record billable expenses to clients. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. Billable expenses to clients can also be called reimbursable expenses. It's money paid for things needed on a job that a client will pay you back for. You will record the checks and expenses normally and before saving mark them as billable. They will be listed on the report called unbilled charges until you add it to an invoice the next time you invoice the client. And that's how it works but it won't work until you activate this feature in the account settings window. Here we are in QuickBooks Online, and as we learned in a prior video, to open the Account Settings window, we click the cog wheel, go over all the way to the left, and the top choice in the leftmost column is Account and Settings. Now, the area of Account and Settings to adjust is the Expenses. Click Expenses in the Left Menu tab. Now, in the top section here where it says Bills and Expenses, you can't click anything until you open up the section with the pencil. Right now, it says Mark Expenses and Items as Billable. That feature is switched off. Now, when we click the pencil, what happens is it opens this up, and we're going to click the check mark here, Make Expenses and Items Billable. Click the check mark and just leave the defaults on the rest of the page. We will talk about changing these defaults in a future video or videos. But right now, we will leave the default track billable expenses as income in a single account. And then we click Save. Now just to demonstrate the difference, when we close the account settings window, and we open up the window for a new expense or check. Notice on the right we now have a box that we can mark the expense as billable. Now let's do an example. Let's imagine on March 3rd we paid Staples for job supplies $250 for supplies that are specific to the Hanson Place job with check number 71. This is billable to the Brown Company for the Hanson Place job. Then we will check the profit and loss by customer and we will check the unbilled charges report and these will be the two reports that show the results after making a check billable. From the top left we click New and go to the column of Vendors and click Check. Now, the date of the check is March 3rd, and the payee is Staples Office Supplies. The check number is check number 71, and the category of expense is Job Supplies. Now, that's the category of the expense, and then we put the amount $250, and we mark it as billable by clicking the check mark under the word billable. Of course, then we have to choose both the customer and the specific job that this check is billable to. We then click Save and Close. And now let's see the result of what we just recorded. We will click Reports, Custom Reports, Profit and Loss by Customer. Now when you look at the Hands in Place job under Brown Company, up top you see we earned $2,700 of income from heating repair 
And that $2,700 came from invoices that we created in previous videos. But down at the expense section, you see we now lowered our profit for the Hanson Place job by $250 for money that we needed to pay specifically for the Hanson Place job. And since we have not billed the client for this yet, we can click Reports, Custom Reports, and go down to Unbilled Charges. And right now, there should be only one charge, one check or expense or whatever it is that we recorded that a client will reimburse us for, but we have not yet placed it on an invoice and requested that the client reimburse. Now, before we bill the client for that expense, you should remember that there are three ways to track and record billable expenses after you bill the client. When we were in the account settings window, you saw we could choose to track the billable expense as income in a common account called billable expense income. And that's how we will do this example. But in future videos, we will learn how to track the expense or the reimbursed expense in specific income accounts for each individual billable expense. And you could also choose to track the billable expense as a decrease to the original expense instead of an increase to income. But we are still in our first example. So we're going to track it as income in a common account called billable expense income. Let's imagine on March 5th, we build Brown Company for the next 20% of the Hanson Place job. We will then add check number 71 that we just made for the office supplies to the invoice as per our agreement. So, how do we do that? Very simple. We click New, Invoice. And of course, the date of this invoice is March 5th. We choose the Hanson Place job under Brown Company. Notice when we choose that client and job, both the estimate and the billable expense show up in the right panel. You have to put the items on the estimate first. So first go to the estimate box and click Add. And now we're telling QuickBooks that we're adding we're billing for 20%. Yours might come up as 25% because that's how we billed the client in the previous invoice. So change it to 20% and we're billing for the next 20% of the job that is completed. Now we will click Copy to Invoice and 20% of the remaining items gets added to the invoice regarding the income we earn for the items that we bill. Now we're going to go to the check that we just made sitting here on the right and we click Add. And we have now added to this invoice this $250 for the job supplies expense. Now unfortunately there is nothing that you can put in the check that will indicate what this is for. You would have to click the description field yourself and explain to Hanson Place and the Brown Company what this reimbursable expense is. There's nothing you can put on the original check that will carry over to the invoice except the money amount. Now, when we click Save and Close, we will now check the results of the reports. Look what happens when we go back to the report in custom reports profit and loss by customer look at this now notice we had income from heating repair went up because that was the body of the invoice increasing it from 2700 to 4050 but notice we still have the 250 dollar expense down here and we have the $250 income up here. This came from the $250 that we actually added to the invoice. 
So if we double click this to see the invoices that we earned income from heating repair, you can see that it breaks it down by item, that there were four items on invoice number one, and here's all the income that we earned from those items. And there were four invoices from invoice, uh, uh, four items from invoice number two that we earned income from. And this invoice number five, or 1005, here's all the income we earned from those items. See, but when we go back, oops, excuse me. When we go back, we can see that this $250, click on it, it comes from the invoice, and here in the memo, it'll tell you the expense, job supplies. And this tells you that you earned $250 in income from job supplies, selling the job supplies to Hanson Place, and you earned $4,050 from the income from heating repair, but you had to spend $250 in job supplies to get your net profit so far of $4,050. Now the one more place to check to confirm that the item has already been billed is here. Click Reports, Custom Reports, and go down to Unbilled Charges. And now you can see there are no unbilled charges left because we actually took the check that was on this report and billed the client by placing it on an invoice in the way that we did.